Okay. Um, so, like I said, my name is Jacob Walker, um, and this presentation is called Regular Expressions 101, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Regex. Um, anybody get that joke? The Dr. Strangelove? Okay. Um, so, we're gonna, I'm going to go over just like an introduction to Regex for those who maybe aren't familiar with it or haven't used it in a while, some of its basic usages, and uh, the advanced features. Uh, to introduce myself a little bit, um, I'm a professional developer. I work at a company called Time IPS. We make a time, and, a state of the art time and attendance system. Um, I also work at a, I also work um, with Matthew here. As a, we do have a consultancy company called Tortubus Consulting. We do custom software. Uh, some of the things that I'm involved in, uh, primarily, I work in PHP, um, usually with MySQL. I'm a really big fan of Bash. I use jQuery HTML. I love Git. Uh, obviously, from my shirt, I love Vim. Um, big Linux guy. I've been getting into Python and Android recently. Uh, and like I was saying, these are the two places I work. Time IPS is my day job, and then by night, I work as a Ninja Turtle. Um, so to give you a little bit more information about me and why I feel like I'm qualified to teach you about regular expressions, I want to tell you things that I love. Number one, and this is in order, is Vim. Absolutely, number one. Number two is regular expressions. Number three is my wife and kids. They make it into the top five. I put Linux, Bash, and the GNU utils. They all kind of come into rank number four, then number five would be carbs and beer in general. Um, I don't know if anyone's interested. I was assuming there'd only be like two people here. Um, if we wanted to go around, maybe does anybody feel like introducing themselves? Maybe it's anyone that hasn't been up front before. Um, I know we have a couple of new faces. We have Bill and what's your name? Caleb. Caleb. Okay. And I think Adam, right? Yeah. yeah I think I, I recognize you from the from the internet. All right. So. A lot of buildup for regular expressions, so what are they? Regular expressions, according to Wikipedia, it's a specific, a specific pattern that provides concise and flexible means to match, or in other words, specify and recognize strings of text, such as particular characters, words, or patterns of characters. So to put that simply, regex, they're wild cards on steroids. So in your, in like a file, in a file browser, or like in a command line utility, you might reference files by saying like star dot text, which would reference like all files that end with the dot txt extension, or foo dot star. So you would be like all files that start with foo, or maybe star bar star, any files that have bar anywhere in the name. So these are wildcards. This isn't regular expressions. Um, this is just something that's pretty commonly used. Regular expressions are taking that to like over 9,000. Um, one thing that you'll need to know is that not all regular expressions are equal. There are, I don't know, like a dozen or two different regular expression engines. Um, the most popular, in my opinion, and my personal favorite, is the regular expressions used by Perl. Um, Perl, if you're not familiar with it, is a scripting language that is uh, really big into regex, and uh, they did a lot, that language did a lot to add features and improve the uh, usability of regular expressions. Um, a lot of, and then, but you might not actually, unless you're actually using Perl, the language, you're not going to use Perl regex directly, but if you're using like PHP or, um, or a lot of C-based languages, you'll probably be using PCRE, which stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. Um, this is an, a library that implements basically all of the same features and functionality of Perl regex. Um, two other really popular ones, there's uh, POSIX. I don't know if you've, I, I'm a Linux guy. Um, everybody here, what's, uh, who here is Linux, Mac, Windows? Okay. Um, something else, BSD, anybody? Okay. Um, POSIX, I believe it stands for like, Portable Operating System Interface for Unix Systems, or something like that. This is like a, it's a set of standards that Unix-based systems like Macs and Linux are supposed to follow. And it defines two different types of regular expressions. There's uh, 
the BRE are basic regular expressions, the ERE, extended regular expressions. Um, you don't really necessarily need to know all of this right here in order to use regex. I think it's worth pointing out because when I was first getting into regular expressions, I would see these acronyms around and I would have no idea what they were or what they even meant. Um, one thing to point out, um, really like every, basically every programming language has to implement their own regular expressions and the good ones try to fit into the standards that are commonly accepted and portable across other languages. Um, but for whatever reason, they can't necessarily all do that. One, because this is up front, which I'll point out JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript's regular expressions engine has a lot, some of the basics, but there's a lot of the advanced things that it can't do. Um, so when we're going into some of this, not everything's going to be portable to every language that you talk about. And this website, uh, my favorite website for regular expressions, uh, regularexpressions.info, it lists like 10 others, but I know there's more than that. So what can you do with regex? You can, the most common uses are to validate input. So when a user is using like your application and they put in some value like an IP address or an email address or a phone number and you want to be sure that it follows a specific pattern. So like for a phone number you might want to say I only accept numbers and maybe like dots or dashes or parentheses or spaces. Um, so if somebody has like an F in their phone number, maybe that's invalid and you can just give them a warning that says, please enter a phone number that you know conforms to our standards. Uh, a really fun use would be string manipulation. Uh, this would have to do with when a when you get some string of text, you can change it. You can use regular expressions to find particular patterns in that text and then change them to something else. Uh, so, for example, at work we have a script that you can pass it. Um, so, in program, you know how you might have like your variable names are underscored, where you'd have like foo underscore bar, or you might have one where it's camel cased, where it's like lowercase f o o and capital b a r. So, you could easily use regex to like switch them back and forth between the two. Um, finding information. This is. The majority of what we're going to talk about really just comes down to how you can use regex to find information. Um, this would be like if you're looking through, you're looking through your code base. Like you're working on a project that's a quarter million lines of code, and you're trying to find anywhere that we reference a particular table. You can use regular expressions to find it in like e easier than just like find and replace. And then the most common use, I'd say, probably is to confuse developers. Um, one in, I'll give you some more examples of that. All right, so first use, input validation. Here I've got two code examples. Uh, can everybody read these OK? Pretty well? OK. Um, the first is in PHP. This, and with regex, it's like skin on a cat. There's more than one way to do it. Um, this is just one example. Um, but here, and we don't need to go over exactly how it works, but right here, this this bit from here to here, from this slash to that slash, this is my regular expression pattern. So this string of characters defines uh, a specific pattern that is going to match an IP address, like 192.168.1.64. So here I'm using PHP to see if this pattern matches against this string, and if it doesn't, then I'm going to send out an error that says you need to please enter a valid IP address. Um, and then here in JavaScript I'm doing the same thing. Um, the syntax is slightly different, but it's essentially the same. Um, as I'm going through, uh, from here towards pretty much the end of the presentation, I'm going to have either a code sample, or more likely what I'll have is on the screen will be um, a bit of text, some regular expression I've applied to it, and certain characters will be highlighted to indicate which things did or didn't match the regex. So as we're going through, if anybody needs me to slow down or stop before I move on, please don't hesitate to speak up. Um, this really, like, I'm intending this to be more of an informal thing than anything else. So if you have any questions or uh, need me to go back or anything, let me know. So this would be this is some example of how you could validate input. 
Uh, string manipulation, this is uh, where it gets fun, in my opinion. Uh, here on the left I have my before. Uh, this is a bit of code, and I want you to pay attention to right here. I have a function that's just called bar. And what I can do in my editor, I'm going to apply this bit of regular expression, and it's going to find all function names like and change it from like function bar to function get bar. So uh, you might do this if you're trying to conf to make your uh, code conform to some particular coding standard. Uh, if you're if you don't have a coding standard, I suggest you develop one or look some up. There's some really popular um, published ones like PSR two. If is anybody into PHP at all? Okay. Uh, PSR2 is a, it stands for it, PHP standards, rules, something like that. Um, and it's just like a set of conventions for how the code should work and how it should look so that it can be the most portable across for other developers to look at and other people in your team. Um, so if you have some kind of standard, uh, it, your code is a lot easier to work in. And it's one thing you, you can use regular expressions to identify places where you're violating that standard, or maybe you can even actually fix the code right here. Another example of string manipulation. Uh, this is a bash script that I wrote, and uh, let me just give you let me tell you what this does here. So first, I I use a tool called grep. Grep is the GNU regular expression parser. Uh, this is is a Unix command line utility that really made regular expressions pop popular back in like, I don't know, 70s, 80s, um, before I was alive. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm looking through all of my code for any instance of the text include once. So in my, because one of the problems that we, one of the things that work, it's not a really big problem, but it annoys me, is that in our quarter of a million lines of PHP, we have like five or six different standards for how we'll include a file. There's like, I mean, sometimes we use double quotes. Sometimes they're single quotes. Sometimes they're wrapped in parentheses. Sometimes they're not. There's sometimes there's extra spaces. It doesn't really matter, I guess. But to me, I like that they would all be consistent. Actually, I executed this, and it made too many changes. And I ended up reverting my changes because I didn't want to commit it. But um, so this finds every place where we include a file using include once. Um, and then I'm going to apply this Perl script, this, which will apply this regular expression that finds all include onces. It finds all of like the spaces, the single quotes, the double quotes, the parentheses. It finds the actual name of the file I'm, that I'm including, and then the rest of the line, and it replaces it with consistent with how I want it to be. So all of the exam, all of the instances will now say include once, and then a space, a single quote the name of the file, a single quote, and a semicolon. So that they'll all be exactly the same. Mostly this is because I'm a little bit of a, I have a little bit of OCD sometimes. The last used to be finding information. Uh, there's a, this is a really popular strip from, who all reads XKCD? Okay, so about half you, so that means the other half have yet to read it, and you would really enjoy it. Uh, so. I'll go ahead and just narrate. I don't think this is real legible in the back. Um, but what it's saying is, whenever I learn a new skill, I concoct elaborate fantasy scenarios where it lets me save the day. These people are saying, oh no, the killer must have followed her on vacation. But to find them, we'd have to search through 200 megabytes of emails looking for something formatted like an address. It's hopeless. And then the hero says, everybody stand back. I know regular expressions. He swings in. Taps on the keyboard, just pearl, and it swings off, and he saved the day. That's obviously ridiculous, but in a real world scenario, you might have 200 megabytes worth of text, and you need to find any any place that you have a particular pattern. Um, I know one time that I did something like this was without the rope. Was when we had when we were doing a review of all of our code to see where we might be vulnerable to SQL injection. And with the way our particular database object worked, I knew that any place that we called a particular method with more than X number of parameters, then we that needed to be checked by hand. 
Now, it, it, it was, there's a lot of false positives because, like, I couldn't have this perfect regex that would just know. But it would get, it gave me the few thousand results that we had to go through and look at. Um, and so that pattern, it was something like anywhere that we called this method execute with an opening parentheses and then, like, more than two commas or, like, more than, like, and then, like, another dollar sign before the end of the line. That meant that there was at least, um, that there was some variable being injected into our, um, into our script and then even into our query and needed to be looked at. The last use, like I said, is confusing developers. There's a really famous quote that uh, some people, when confronted with a problem, will think, well, I know. I'll use regular expressions. And now they have two problems. Uh, part of that is because you'll see regular expressions like this. This is the RFC 82 is the official definition of an email address. And this regular expression will legit, like officially and definitively match an email address. If you put an email address and it doesn't match against this, then it's not a real email address. Um, there's this, this particular regex is, is not written or maintained by hand, actually. Like, it's compiled from another set of Perl scripts that put it all together. And I don't think anyone's ever actually sat down and tried to read through this and see what it does. Uh, potentially, you could be ridiculous. Well, you know, we only have so much time, um, and I think I'd rather go on with the rest. OK, so. That's been the int that's the introduction. Um, before we move on, does anybody have any picture? Does anyone does everyone have like a basic idea of what regular expressions are? I call them regular expressions, or regex is another p common name. Those are the same thing. Um, so basically, it's just a way that you can match that you can find patterns in text. So in the rest of the examples I'm gonna give, as I talked about earlier, there's different flavors or syntaxes or versions of regular expressions. Um, for just so you're aware, everything I'm going to use from here on out uses the Perl syntax, or which is, this would be the same as like the PCRE syntax. Um, no. Well, I think I think it's similar, but yeah, there's because there's a lot of stuff that JavaScript can't do. And at the end of the presentation, um, I have a resource where there's a, a website you can go to that lists like 15 different regular expression flavors and like 300 different features of regex. And it's like this big table of which engines do and don't support which features. So you can go through and see which of them, like like JavaScript, it has like half of them or something. And a lot of them, honestly, are, you wouldn't really use in most situations. Um, you don't have to actually look at this. This is really just, I felt like, for posterity, I needed to put include this. Um, in my examples, I'm just using this bash script I wrote, search.sh, and this is it right here. Um, I didn't, this is, I'm using a program called ACK, which is, it's just, it's similar to grep. It's a, another program that you can use to search through text for patterns. Um, and my examples are going to be like this. We're here, so this is just my, this is the prompt for my command line. This is me running the program. And then here within these single quotes is the regular expression I'm passing in. So in this case, I'm passing in the regular expression r dot star ed. And then here's, and then what follows would be the text that I'm applying it against. And the part that's highlighted like this is what matched the regular expression. So with this, so if I have text that says the red highlighted text matches the regex, then r dot star ed matches all of this part right here. There are um, the the one that I know of is a paid application. Uh, it's called like Regex Buddy or Power Grep. Um, either of those work pretty well. I think they're like forty bucks or something. Um, but beyond that, my guess is PowerShell. And then from there, you probably have some kind of like Grep like things. Uh, yeah, that would work pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Like 
testing. But if you've but if you've got like a bunch of files that you need to grep against, yeah, that, that power grep probably would work pretty well. Um, and that's the my favorite source for regex is this the site regular expressions dot regular dash expressions dot info. Like if you Google for anything about regular expressions, it's gonna be in like the top three. It's a really popular resource. Uh, one of the things though is that the author of that site, um, he sells, he has a software company that sells a couple of regex tools, like the two that I mentioned. So like, he does a pretty fair job of, you know, pretty unbiased job, but he definitely puts those out there. But I think they're pretty good from what I've read. Okay. Bear grip. All right. Jason, write that down. All right. Um, all right, so moving into the actual syntax of regex. The, the, like the building blocks would just be single characters. So in this case, my regular expression is just the letter E. And all the letter E's in my text have been highlighted because they've all been matched. Um, regu this, when I say regular characters, I mean anything except for these characters. There's like uh, open, there's square bracket, backslash, up here at dollar dot bar question mark star plus and then parens. These special characters are they what they're what controls the syntax of regex. This is what this is like the control flow of how your regular expression in, is interpreted interpreted. Um, if you needed to search for one of these characters, like I wanted to say, let's find all the occurrences of an asterisk in this file. Uh, because it's a special character and it has a special meaning, if you wanted to look for a literal asterisk, you have to escape it by putting the backslash in front of it. Um, and one of the things I'll tell you about regex is there's there's different layers. To, when you're working in it, if you're working in PHP, PHP might require you to escape some things. And if you're if you're generating a string of like JavaScript from within PHP. PHP might require you to escape things, and then JavaScript might also require you to escape things, and then your regular expression might require you to escape things. So, um, honestly, the way I kind of do it is if you're if something's not working quite right, just start throwing backslashes around until it works. <laughs> you put in one backslash, doesn't work. Put in another one and try it again. Keep going. If you have six, then you're probably doing something horribly wrong. But anything less than that, maybe it's what you need to do. You could, and maybe that would be a good application. So here I'm just looking for a literal star, and the one star in my text has been matched. Um, so that's pr those are the just basic, I'm just matching particular letters. Um, the next single character match would be uh, the dot, or a period. Uh, the dot matches almost any character. Pretty much every character. The only characters that does not match would be like new line characters. Um, so when if you if you're trying to if you use a dot, it's not going to keep going past the end of the line unless you turn that option on because different regex engines allow you to do that. Is this the multi-line Yes, that is what it is. There's a mode called multi-line where you can where it makes it so that the dot will actually match new line characters. So you can have a single regex that would span across multiple lines of text. Um, but typically it wouldn't unless you so like I said, unless you turn that option on. So here now my regex is an R, a dot, and a D. So I'm doing two things here. One, I'm introducing the dot, which is a wildcard character, and I'm also matching more than a single character now. So I'm putting I'm putting different characters together into my string. So my R dot D matches right here where it says red. Because first the R matches the R. And then the engine moves forward to the next piece of the regex. And the dot matches the E, because dots can match anything. And then the D matches the D. And then nothing else gets matched because my because nothing else follows that particular pattern. So dot represents a single character, so there's two to each. Right. Yeah, if it was read, then that wouldn't be correct. Um, and so and also here, 
you'll be curious as regex. When the engine is going through and parsing this text, it gets to this R, and it says, oh, hey, we found an R. Well, let's go to the next character, and it's an E, and that matches my dot, so that we're looking pretty good. It gets the next here, which is a G, but G doesn't match this D, so it fails, and so none of this is considered matched. Um, but here, it actually matches all three positions in the regular expression, so it always returned as a successful match. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, or another place like, and like here, we have like an E, D, so like that would match like this part, but it doesn't, but this T doesn't match the R. So like when the engine gets into here, for like efficiency's sake, internally, the engine would, hits that T, it doesn't even bother processing any further because it knows that it doesn't have to. Uh, the, regular, the engines, if they're well written, try to be as efficient as possible, and so they won't continue matching. All right, the next, um, the next piece of syntax I'm going to introduce you to, and honestly, there's more in this presentation than really can be thoroughly covered in the amount of time that we have. Um, so my goal is to kind of introduce you to all the different pieces and to give you the ideas and the kind of the terminology to um, implement this and go do further research and use it in your own projects and your own personal uses. Uh, character classes would be characters within square brackets. So here I have square bracket red and closing square bracket. A character class like this matches a single character. So what so what this means? It's going to match any character that will satisfy the regex inside these brackets. So here we have red. This means an r or an E, or a D. So here, like, this E right here, not matches. It doesn't have an R and a D on either side of it, but that doesn't matter, because this character class is only matching one character, and an E is on the list, so it matches. Now here, these three characters, they're all matching separately. This isn't, like, one match that matches the word red. This is one match against R, and then another match against E and D. You see every R, E, and D throughout the, this, the text has been matched. Um, and that's the important thing to remember, is that with these character classes, it's only matching one character with it. Like, the results of, within the square brackets, is evaluated down as one character. A useful feature uh, with character classes is you can negate them or invert them. So if you put a caret, the symbol here, in the first position of a character class, that's a special. That's special, and it means that this is like a negative character class. So, actually, what here my regex is bracket caret red means that this character class will match any character that is not an R or an E or a D. So here, the T and the H are matched. This E doesn't match. The space matches because spaces are characters too. Um, again, the R, the E, and the D fail, and then you can see everything else that does match. Is, uh, is the character, I mean, those character classes, do they not match utilize as well as the dot? That, uh, that depends on the flavor of regex you're using. And actually, if you look here, see how these are, there's like no space between these two lines. When I ran this regex against the text, I was just extra space here, and this is because with uh, with this Perl regex, it is matching the new line character, and the particular tool that I'm using, this is how it's identifying that is like it's, I think it's like it's hinting here that we did match the new line, and so that's why it's like it kind of mangled the output. That's a good question. Another really useful thing with character classes is you can define ranges. The most common ranges you would use are like capital A to Z, lowercase a to Z, or like 0 to 9. Um, also keep in mind, typically, regular expressions are case sensitive, so a capital A will not match a lowercase a. Um, but here, so in this example, what I'm matching is I have a character class that matches the range of O through 
Z. Kansas. Okay. Um, so, so how, let me let me think back to my alphabet real quick. So we have L M N, then we have O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Any of those letters would match this character class because that's the range I've defined. So I don't know if anybody wants to, you know, validate the engine here that all these all the highlighted letters are actually between O and Z. Just lowercase. Capital T didn't match. I always kind of wondered that, but never really tried it. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. Okay, so we got... Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right, Seth, we'll, we'll just have you... So we're going to look for... All right. I did that on my other machine. So A to Z matches. We do A to big Z? No. That is an invalid range. Yeah, they don't like that. Oh, and I would say that probably has to do with the positions in the ASCII character table. Capital letters first. Well, then, there's your answer. Um, so with these character ranges, like I said, commonly you use like A to Z, like capital A to Z or lowercase A to Z or 0 to 9. Most flavors of regex have the shorthands that you can use. Uh, backslash D means um, any digit, so 0 through 9. So instead of having a character class, like oh, instead of doing instead of doing open bracket 0 through 9, you can just do D, slash D like that, and that would match any character, any digit. Um, all these shorthands also have a negated version, so capital D would mean Anything that's not a digit, uh, again, including new lines potentially, depending on the flavor. Um, slash W, this is word characters. Uh, you might see that it, some people might say this is equivalent to like A to Z, capital A to Z, 0 through 9, so like any letter or number. Um, but this includes non ASCII characters as well, like characters with the like umlauts and those other symbols on top of them, below them. Again, there's a negative version, so capital W B not a word character. So any any white space, basically, or like control markers like new lines. And then another one that's really useful, it would be uh, slash S, so white space. Um, so depending on because you'll if you if you aren't already aware from the you know tabs and spaces are different. And this causes me a lot of conf a lot of frustration. I'm a spaces guy myself, um, but so white spaces like is a convenient way to match spaces or tabs or like new line characters at the end of the at the end of a line. All right, uh, getting a little bit more complicated now. The next the next uh, feature we're going to talk about is groups. So if you have a, have characters and you group them together within parentheses, um, then you're making this group. And you can do a lot of things with that. The one we're going to talk about right here is how you can specify um, like an or kind of condition. So here, following along in this regex, we start with just reg. So my regex has to match with a literal r, and then a little, literal e, and then a literal g. Then this open parentheses is a special character, and it's closed over here on this end. So within these two open and closed parentheses, I have a couple of I have two different regular expressions. So we can match reg, and then this regular expression, or reg, and then this other one. So you can see here, like regex gets matched, and so does regular expression. Um, 
because this is like I matched REG and then the first part or REG and then the second part. Um, does that make sense how that works? Where you can have and you can net, you can have these you can have as many as you want like within a group like as many like different regexes with separated with bars or you can nest them like when you get into really gnarly stuff you're gonna put everything together and they can be nested pretty much I, I guess infinitely I don't know if there's any kind of limit um, but if just for a basic example this I think does the trick um, Remember these because we're going to come back to them later towards the end of the presentation for one of my favorite parts of regex, which is back references. Um, what you can do, uh, this part within the parentheses here, you can, well, we'll talk about that, but another thing is there's like modifiers that you can put on to say that uh, something is optional or something should be repeated more than once in your pattern. And so uh, here you can apply that to the entire group. So let's talk about that, how you can repeat matches. So um, here, the, one of the most common ways you'll do this is just with the star. The star character is another one of those special characters, and what it means is that you're going to repeat the previous thing zero or more times. So in my regular expression here, I have a capital F, a lowercase o, and then a star. So that star means that this O is needs to be repeated zero or more times within my within my pattern. Um, and then the literal BAR. So all of these are matched. We've got the first one, FUBAR, matches because there's a literal F and then zero or more O's and then bar. FOBAR matches as well um, because there's zero or more of the O's. And then this foo bar matches because there's no limit on how many. It's just zero or more. So like at least zero. And then here, this one, F bar, there's, there aren't any O's in this word, but it still matches because when, it, when I say zero or more, that zero meaning that that character's optional. So here, like, this is essentially the same as if I had had just, like, F-B-A-R for my regex would match here. And now here, this last one, foo x u bar does not match because that X in the middle of the O's is going to mess up the pattern. Um, stars you use a lot, and this is when you want to you want to repeat something to say, like, yeah, just as many of those as you want until we get to the next thing. Uh, yes, it would. So here. Okay. So there's that. So if we're going to look for... Do we have this? Uh, no. So actually, you know what? Let me just do this real quick. D don't look. Don't look. I know. Dang it. Whatever. Okay, so I'm looking for an F and an O or an X and then bar. Again, it's not. You know what we're going to do? That's what I meant. O or capital X, as many of those as you want, bar. <laughs> Two S's. Okay. One more time. This doesn't work. I'm going home. All right. There we go. Uh, yeah, so now it matched. Um, 
it's probably less efficient to do and to do it here with a with a four, because the other thing that you could do which would be to have a character class to say O's or X's would be fine. Say what? Yeah, yeah. Um, so like if you wanted to say like I, I have there's some text and then either three of these or five of those and then some other text, then like that would be in a group. Now, so this was the star repeats zero or more times. Its cousin is the plus. Um, this one gives you a little bit more control and a little bit more of a refined regex. It's refined. It's like a, it's like a nice wine. It's never mind. Um, I was trying to do something there. Uh, so it's like a star, but it's it requires that you have one or more matches. So it's like at least once. So here, when I'm doing that same, so previously I did I had a star here, and now I've got a plus. So I'm looking for an F, one or more zero O's, and then bar. Well, that matches foo bar, fo bar, foo bar, but it's not match F bar because there has to be at least one O in that position there. One thing that gets me a lot. Um, especially when I use something like dot star or dot plus, there's this concept in regular expression when you're repeating uh, matches, like with the star or the plus, by default, both of those things, the, the star and plus, they're greedy. What that means is that when the regular expression is going through and trying to match, it's going to have, when you have, like, like if I just have my regex with just, like, a single letter, well, there's not really, there's only one thing that it can match. But when I have this dynamic matching where it can match like a variable number of characters, there's a lot of different possibilities on what will be matched by your string. Um, so like I said, by default, uh, star and plus are greedy. So in one of my previous examples, I searched for r dot star ed. This dot matches any character, and star says match as much as you can. So in other words, this is an r with a d, with an ed, with anything in between, right? So here, it matches from this r all the way over to this ed. So this whole piece is going to get matched because the star is greedy. And it wants to match as many characters as it can. And so the plus is greedy too. Um, the inverse of greedy in regular expression lingo is lazy. So you can make the match lazy by adding a question mark after it. So um, here in my example, I got r dot star, and then question mark, meaning uh, that plus uh, that star that's a lazy star. So these three characters here, dot star question mark, those are all like one component of the regex is means like. We're going to have a lazy match for zero or more any characters. So here, it matches the R, it matches the E, matches the dot star, and then it sees a D and it says, oh, I'm done. I've satisfied this, this pattern. I don't need to keep going. So it stops. Um, this is a really important concept because I, I don't know how many times I'm trying to like find and replace some text and I'm being lazy, and I'm just going to say, oh, well, we're going to match this dot star until you hit this other thing. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at it like, oh, it's just going to match this part. It's just going to match red. Oh, no, it went all the way out to red highlighted because um, I wasn't paying attention. Um, so you just have to be aware that if your red is, if it's matching too much, you need to tell it to be lazy, tell it to chill out, simmer down. Another way that you can repeat your matches and have more control is using curly braces. Um, there's three different syntax for this. Syntaxes? Syntaxes? Sentai? Centaurs? Anybody? I don't know. Cent I like it. There's three different centaur for this. Um, within cur an, an integer within curly braces, like here I have four, just means four matches. So if, in this example, if I did like 
if I had O, curly brace, two curly brace, it would only match the foobar that has two O's in it. Or, like, this one has 11. I could say, like, only match ele the 11 O version of foobar. Uh, or if you do, like, X comma Y, this is saying, so two to five will match two, three, four, or five characters of whatever was preceding this, these curly braces. And then just two comma would mean at least two. So we talked about, like, plus is at least one. You know, star is at least zero. Well, if you wanted to say, like here in my example, I have an F, at least nine O's, and then a bar. And this is the only one that matches that. It has 11, but that's at least nine, so it matches. Um, before we move on um, off of repeating, uh, does anyone have any questions on how to make your regex repeat like that, span out? I don't think so. You could, well, you could, but not with this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if I wanted to have, we're going to match the, the two version or the, dang it, 11 version. No, it's there. It's just it matched the two, and then it was done. It didn't need to keep going, but it could have. So, well, that oh, that is that what you meant? Well, that works too. Uh, yeah. So here, so it's saying the two, the two foobar and the eleven foobar, either one would match. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an open ceiling. I don't think so, um, but we can find out real quick. So we're looking for an F, and then no more than five O's. No, I don't think it's valid. I think now it's actually, it's looking for like a literal curly brace right there because curly braces are, you don't have to escape curly braces unless you were like, because they only become special characters when you have valid syntax like this here to say that it's a, a quantifier. Um, that would work. Yeah. I think it outside the box, but really, I like it. You can, you can also make matches optional. Um, like we talked about earlier how with star, there's that zero or more behavior. So like here, there's no O in this string because it's, it's optional because it's zero or more. Um, you can make anything optional by putting a question mark after it. Now it's kind of confusing because earlier we talked about how question marks can say that a match is either, is either greedy or lazy, or whether we make it lazy if it's greedy by default. Um, when, it's, when it's not doing that, when it's not making something lazy, a question mark means this is optional. So here I'm looking for an R, an E, and maybe a D because I have the question mark. So it matches here R-E-D, and then it matches this R-E, because the D is optional. Um, you can put that, so going back to our example, I could have a foo, and then 11 O's and a bar, so that matches that one. But then I should be able to just say, Yeah. 
here by putting these in parentheses and then putting that question mark. I'm saying mm, this this bit right here that's optional. Like you could match eleven O's, that'd be great. You don't have to though. So basically, you could just erase that part and then it's just F bar which matches here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What they said about the question mark, I think, gives me sure. Since the question mark is radius to the optical, I think it's greater than the actual possible. And if they say you can put a question mark after the question mark, it's like a lazy optional. What's the practical? I can't think of a practical. Yeah, I don't know. There, there probably is a real practical explanation uh, application for that, but I think that it's more likely to be. Uh, having to do with like the performance of your regular expression, um, if with you know these days when our production servers have 16 gigabytes of RAM and SSDs, maybe we can get away with not caring so much. But back in the day, you really every bit of performance really mattered. And I don't know, somebody might flame me for saying that now, but um, I think it just has to do with when the when the engine is going through and processing your regex to match against the text how efficiently it can do that and how many iterations it has to go through before it can get through the rest of your the rest of that string I'm pretty sure that's right I could be making it up Does anybody have any other questions oh, good yeah i have i do have a bs so all right uh, another really common thing is anchoring. So here I'm gonna I'm just gonna go back a bunch real quick. In our first example, we just matched an E. And every E in my file got matched. Okay. Um, that's because my regular expression is going through and it's just trying to my, the the program is trying to apply my regular expression wherever it can. Now if I was looking for like just an E and not, not the not the part in the like I just want an e like I want to find anywhere we had just an e by itself. Um, there's a couple different ways you could do that. One thing that you'll run into a lot is anchoring. Um, there are two more special characters. There's the carrot and the dollar. Now earlier we talked about carrots in uh, character class. How like a carrot at the beginning would negate the character class. That's like one special usage of it. Um, the other special usage is when you have a caret at the beginning, it, this will match like the start of your string. So this is a little bit different, but this char this regex character doesn't match a character. It doesn't match like a letter or a number or a space. It matches a position in your t in the string in the text. So this matches the position at the start of the string. Um, and then dollar matches the end of the string. So if anybody's been wondering this whole time why my slides start with a carrot and end with a dollar here, that's what that joke's about. Um, the So here I'm looking for foobar. Nothing nothing fancy. No, no repeating or anything. Just regular foobar. But it's anchored to say, well, I want a foobar that goes from the beginning of the string to the end of the string. So here, foobar is a common term in programming. Well, we matched the beginning. We matched the F-O-O-B-A-R. But then there's more stuff. And my regex said that the string should be done after the R. So I don't match anything on this first line. On the second line, all I have is just the string foobar, so it matches. And then here, I've got kind of the inverse. A common term in programming is foobar, where I have, like, this would match if I didn't if I didn't anchor it to the beginning of the string. If I just said, give me any lines that end in foobar, this is how I would do it. I would say, give me foobar dollar. So it would match that last line because it ends in foobar. But because I've anchored it to the beginning and the end, it doesn't. So, no. So if I wanted to say, uh, show me the lines that begin with foobar, and I'm leaving the dollar off,
So I'm looking for start the beginning of the string and then foobar. And then I, I'm not specifying anything else, so whatever else happens after that, I don't care. So here in this case, well, this string starts with foobar, so it matches. This one starts with foobar, so it matches. If I went the other way around, and I just anchor it at the end, um, having that dollar sign, then I'm going to say, oh, give me all lines that end with foobar. So this one does. It starts and ends with it. And this one ends in foobar as well. Well, um, grep minus V. <laughs> we could probably do. Well, the character would only the character would only negate it within a character class. So if I want lines. All right, let's say that again. Lines that don't start with foobar. That's what we're looking for, right? I know I'm gonna I'm probably gonna have this in here. I mean, well, a real track would a real a real ha a hack one would be like, give me beginning and then not an F. That matches just by virtue of what you asked for, like a slicker solution. <laughs> yeah, I could. I mean, the hack also to go that route to you knowing that I have the R. Um, I don't know, to match the whole thing. But would it do any good? Well, you're going to get false positive three lines in Like for your subject. Right. Yeah, um, he's talking like this. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> no, I, I do appreciate the, comp the questions because they make this more interesting. Dollar. Yeah, or we could do make it case case insensitive to depending on like the program you're using. You usually can turn that on. Um, another thing that you can do outside of like the regex, like within regex, yeah, that's how I would do it. But in practical applications, if I wanted to find all lines that did not end with foobar, I would go a step above my regex and use whatever program is actually going to parse it. So, I think so. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, what I was going to say was, like, typically what I would do, so here, like, I'm using grep to find all occurrences of foobar. And so then I'm going to use grep to find all occurrences of foobar at the end, but usually in whatever program you're using, you can say invert my entire regex. So by having like a dollar V at the, like in this particular program, grep, dollar V will say like, yeah, match my regex, and if it matches, then throw that line away and give me the lines that don't match. So like in this case, there's one line in my source that does not end in foobar, and that's the only thing that's um, spit out by this program. Here? What do you mean? Yeah. Well, if the caret is not the first part, I think it'll do it. 
Well, you could, but the problem is if we do if we put if we do this, it's only going to match one character, an, so any character that is not an F, an O, a B, an A, or an R. Um, and so, like, if you want to say like negate this word, uh, that's where it gets a little iffy. So like nothing match there, yeah. Here. Yeah. See now this is gonna be the beginning of the string and then zero more white space and then foobar and then the end of the string. So this would match We're looking for, what was it, lines that don't start with foobar, I guess. <laughs> this is no problem. Um, I guess the answer is, I don't know. Well, you look it up, let me know. Yes, on Google, on, go on Google Plus and post your answer. You'll get extra credit. Uh, another way that you can, if you were looking for just some a specific bit and you didn't want it to continue on, um, one thing you can do is you can use word boundaries. So earlier we talked about um, there's some shorthands like slash D, slash S, and slash W that match like all digits or all word characters or white space. Uh, slash B, this is another special one like the anchors, like the carrot and the dollar, where they, it's not matching a character, it's mas matching a position. And it's matching the position between two word characters. So uh, basically, you can just think of these as word boundaries. So um, you can use it to like match whole words or words that either start or end with a string. So just like with the carrot and the dollar, you don't have to use it on either side. Like I could just begin with a boundary or end with a boundary. So here, when I'm looking for a boundary, foo, and then a boundary again, it matches here where it says foo, and it's like a whole word. But like here where it says fool, it doesn't match that because it's expecting there to be a word boundary here after this second O, but there isn't one. There's another character, an L. So then, so that invalidates the regex. Like um, no, those would count. Yeah, so remember, remember, okay, so we talked about word characters being like W. It's like A to Z, A to Z, 0 through 9. And then all the non stand, non ASCII characters, like we said, like the A's with the umlauts and stuff like that. So it would match anything that's like between those two. And you, you, you will use that a lot. So if I have like. Um, So I might have like uh, oh, missing a semicolon. Whatever. So if I'm gonna look for like so like so here it'll match because um, it's mat like. There's a boundary between the G. There's a, a non. This is a non-word character. So it's like when you're going from a word character to a non-word character, is that's that's what these B's would match. Okay, so just about done. Probably. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So if I wanted to have so I have like uh, Adam Adamantine Adam Mint I could look for 
Adam, and it would only match the first one because, like, all three of them match up until the M because all three of them have the beginning of the string and A D A and M, but then only but the but the next two have more word characters after the M, and I'm expecting a boundary there, so it doesn't work. Carrot or dollar only can only will bind you to the whole line. They match the beginning and the end of the line. But with boundaries, you can say like only particular words. Yeah. yeah. Um, a real good example in Jason and Matthew will recognize this one. So work. There's a function like that, and there's a function like that. They're very similar, but the other one has like extra letters after it. So if I wanted to find where all do we call this the first function, adjust range DST, uh, what do I call this interval func? Well, they both match because I just said find adjust range DST. But if I wanted to say, no, just just run, just range DST, not the other one, I could put a word boundary in there and so that it's saying, like, just this. Okay, so my two favorite things about regex are assertions, which we'll cover, and then back references. Uh, assertions, usually, you look ahead and look behind is what they're usually called. This is... This is what I would consider advanced regex. These are things that you don't use very often until you get really comfortable with them, and then you find yourself using them more often than you should. Um, this is, again, we're matching, like with our boundaries and our anchors, we're matching a position, kind of. We're, but this, this doesn't match characters themselves. Um, so what I'm going to say is I want to I want to match that a pattern either does or does not follow or proceed another pattern. So that's probably clear as mud, right? The, the, the important part is that the pattern that comes after is not included in the matched set. So here's some examples. So the first one, so we have a positive look ahead. In Perl, the syntax for this is you have this group that goes question mark equals pattern. So this part, everything within this group here this is like a special group called a look ahead that is not actually part of your results. It's just used like a like a like we have this, those boundaries, right? That's a good example. So we have those boundaries that would let you match at the position between word like uh, word and non-word characters. This basically lets you like define your own boundaries. Um, so here, I'm looking for an e, and in our first example when we look for an e, there was I don't know, like 10 of them. There's a bunch. But I'm very specifically only looking for E's that are followed by D's. So within the parentheses here is my look ahead. And so I'm saying find me an E that is followed by a D. Now notice that only the E's are actually highlighted here. This E is followed by a D, so it matches. So is that one. But this E is followed by a space, so it doesn't match. So with... Uh, what you can do with these kinds of things is, uh, let's say I wanted to find anywhere that I call that adjust range DST function, and but I wanted to find anywhere that I had like a space after it. So I would say like find me all adjust range DSTs after a space, or I might go the other way around and use like a look behind and say find me all spaces that are preceded by a just range DST. So here, this is a positive look ahead. The syntax is question mark equals. So I'm saying, find me an E that's followed by a D. A negative look ahead is like the inverse, where the, the format is question mark bang, or exclamation point. So I'm look, here, I'm looking for an H that is not followed by an E. So these H's and highlighted, those that's an H that's followed by something that's not a D, an E. 
But like uh, this H here, it doesn't match because it is followed by an E. Um, this is in regular expressions and in programming in general, you get into this a lot where you have like, I don't know, you have a whole bunch of like double negatives, triple negatives, you know, like sextuple negatives. Where you're like, find me all the H's that are not followed by something that is not a D that is not followed by this. And you're like, oh, what is this? I don't know. Um, so you should look ahead. So there's a positive or negative. Look ahead. And then, or you can look behind. So a positive look behind. The syntax is the same as the look aheads, but they put this less than sign here, like a left arrow to say we're looking back here. So in this case, I'm actually I'm matching E's. I'm looking for E's in my text, but only E's that are that come after an R. So again, these E's are highlighted because that's what matched. Because these E's come after an R, but like these E's do not. And then so the last one here is just the inverse, the negative look behind. So it's, oh, that's wrong. It's not supposed to be an equal sign there. Um, this is the syntax. So I've got question mark, less than bang G, and then H. So I'm saying find me all H's that are preceded by something that is not a G. So this H is followed, is preceded by a T, so it matches. This H is preceded by a G, so it doesn't. Yeah, probably. I'm surprised I didn't. This is my favorite thing. Put you on the spot, Anthony. <laughs> well, there's a special thing about that. No, you can have multiple characters. In fact, you can have, you can nest entire like crazy regexes in here, but most, many um, flavors of regex will not accept variable numbers of characters here because it's just too hard for the engine to process because it has to. Just, I'm finding something, and then I have to, but then I have to like unravel what I found so far, and look back, and say, well, what was what came before it? And it, a lot of them can't handle variable lengths. But you could, but I've done this where you have, um, where I'll have like a group in here with like or, so like I have a, I have a script at work that goes through and it finds. Like first it goes through and it builds up a list of these functions that I'm looking for, and then it looks for any like invocations of that function. So I'm defining that using like any place where it's not preceded by like uh, like an arrow sign or like colon colon because those are okay in my example, or like an in and a space, because I'm thinking maybe that's the function declaration, you know, but like, so you can have uh, complex complex patterns in your look behinds, look aheads. So far we've only talked about like two of the uses of regex, find, like validating input and finding text. Well three if we include confusing developers. Um, now we'll, my last few slides will take that and add the next layer on top of it, which is using that regex to replace text. Um, typically, it's done in this form, where you've got, usually there's like a, so from here, from this S to like here, this is my regex, this is like my find and replace pattern here. Um, usually it starts with an S, meaning substitute. So we're going to substitute anything that matches this pattern with this replacement. Um, and then I include this because usually you'll have flags on the end of this, and I have a slide later that covers like what those could be. The most common one would be like G, which means global. So like if I wanted to take, if I wanted to say within this line we're gonna like find all pat, all every where there's the word pattern, and replace it with the word replacement, but I want to I want to hit every reference. Then I would have the G right here, which would say global. Uh, so here, for an example, uh, cat is a it's a 
a Linux or GNU util that just, in this case, I'm just like printing a file out for your reference. So I have this file called couple.txt, which says Matthew Keeler and Whitney Lears. And then I'm running this script against it. I'm going to search for Lears and replace it with Keeler. And now it says Matthew Keeler and Whitney Keeler. So they just got married like last week. Hey, congratulations. Um, this is a very basic example where we're taking, we're just matching a simple regex, not the Whitney simple, and we're replacing it with an even simpler regex. Um, but this this regex here, this pattern, you can use like every every bit of regex that your language supports to define the pattern on what you're going to match. So like everything that we've covered so far is applicable to replacing text because you can say I want to find all characters like this that are not preceded by this or take that whole thing, put that in parentheses and say or some other characters like this that are followed by some other characters. Repeat that as many times as you want. So you can have this ridiculous regex for your pattern and then we're going to replace it. Um, now how you replace it, you, well one thing is you just have text. So this replacement part, it's not really regex itself in the sense that like, it's not a pattern, it, it's a replacement. So if you put like a star in here, it's going to be a literal star. It's not a regex to match something because this is what you're going to replace with. But there are a lot of special characters that you can do here that will change your replacement value or, de or define it. And one of those is back references. So you remember earlier we talked about groups where you can have like open parentheses, some text, and closing parentheses. So everything within those parens is a group. Um, anything in that pattern can be reused in your replacement. So what you so if you have I have an example, right? Yeah, I do. Okay, so I have so anything that's in this pattern, um, you can bring it back into your replacement. So if I'm just going to go into like my text editor of choice, whatever that would be, and just do find and replace, well, it's fine. I'm just going to say find all of these, replace them with these. Like it's real simple. But what if what I'm going to match is dynamic? I'm not just matching all occurrences of foo. I want to match foo or bar or baz and I want to replace them all with the word acme or I want to replace well in that case here I just my regex I guess would be simple because I just match those here and then I just replace them with the same thing but what if I want to replace them all with themselves but the lowercase version of themselves or the uppercase or just the first letter uppercase and everything else lowercase um, these are things you can do and so one thing you would do is you would use back references, so I would, in my subject, I would have my regex in a group, and then in my replacement, you reference it, and usually it, you just do it with slash one through nine. Uh, most languages support more than nine back references. You're going to have a pretty gnarly regex if you're getting that deep into it, but you might. Um, but some of, the, some of the older languages will only support nine. Um, so, and some of them, like I think like .NET actually, will let you name these groups. So like in my regex, when I'm going through like, let's say I'm going to find, like here's a, here's a good example. So I've got this text. This is me, this is my family, and I've got it in the form of like first name, last name. If I wanted to switch that around, um, so here I could do. We're gonna search for as many word characters as you want, as many spa as many white spaces as you want.
You guys still read that? Okay. So here are my regex. I'm going to match zero or more word characters, zero or more spaces. Oh, I don't get to escape that. I have a habit of doing that. And then zero or more word characters. So this is like, I'm going to match your first name, the spaces, and then your last name. And then I'm going to replace it with dash two, with first name. We'll just do first, or no, last, two, first, one. So here I've just got like straight up text in my replacement. I'm pulling in the back reference from the second group, more text, and then a back reference to the first group. Oh, I need to give it the name of the file. Bear word found where we expected it. So this is the problem with doing things on the fly. What is going on here? Any ideas, anybody? No, but then it's just executing it with the P. Well, let's just start with. Oh, I think that G is probably it. Foo. Great. So I've I've made everybody in my family foo. There we go. Yeah, it was the G on the end. So it was like, it was matching the L. Or it was, first it was matching like the space before the J, doing the whole thing. Then matching the J, doing the whole thing. Um, so anyway, so here. So my original file. And then my modified version, where I've found, I'd use back references to say wherever you found the last name, the second match, we'll do an L, and then the second match, a space, an F, and then the first match. Can you bring up that one? Oh, the one that didn't work? Yeah. Well, I could, sh I could show you. So, so when I put this G on it, it's like, and I think it's because I've got these as, as Jonathan mentioned, because I had them as, I'm just using asterisks. This is one of the common pitfalls of regex, is making everything optional. Because optional white space, or optional word characters, optional white space, and optional word characters, well, it's all optional. So, like, the empty string at the beginning of the line, that matches, you know? And then, um, and because I've got it global, it's trying to apply this entire regex to like every character of every line in my file, including the new lines. And so that's how we get this like gobbledy mess. Probably. Let's try it. Hey, there we go. Yeah, so there it works because they weren't all optional. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm being more restrictive with what the regex engine is allowed to do. Probably. Let's take that a look. And... Good point. Good question. So that did work. And it usually is a good idea to anchor. Like, I try to get into the habit of 
using the carrot and the dollar to anchor my entire regus. If I'm looking, if I if I'm gonna pat, if I'm gonna describe the entire line with my pattern, but if I'm only looking for like subsets within a line, then obviously you can't. Yeah. I don't know if you can do even an odd per se. Um, that would get into more like um, there's a program called SED, which stands for it's like Stream Editor, and you can get that to match different lines differently. Um, but this, because like the right now, this is a you know, this is applying our regex to like every line. Um, if I had some hack like this, where oh, I got to do this with a macro, right? Much more efficient to do it like this, <laughs> especially when there's four lines. So. That's horrible. So two x p, and then we're gonna go x. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I did. Hey, if there, were, if there was like a thousand people in my family, that would have saved a lot of time. So here, if I'm going to look for, we're going to look for two, four, six, eight, or zero. It's like, hey, there's my my even lines. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> And I mean that seems like a hack, but you, as part of your script, the file you're gonna process, you could like pull that file out, prepend the line number to every file, and then go through. There's probably a much better solution. I'm thinking of set because, like we said, you can match. Like you just straight up give it line numbers to match to delete or not. Probably. That was my goal. That's so crazy, it's just my work. Well, here, the example I was intending to give. Um, here on the left, I have some PHP code that's it's namespaced in the Acme namespace, and I'm saying throw exception. So in PHP, this is going to look for a class called Acme exception. But that's not what I meant. I meant the global version. So I, I meant this slash exception. So this, this one-liner would go through and find anywhere that I say, like, new... I'm saying, like, find... Search for the text new in a space, and then we're going to have a group that matches... Anything that's not an open paren, as many of those, one or more of those. So instead of doing like dot star, I like sometimes you do dot star and then you'll have another character over here. So you're gonna say like, oh, go until you hit that. Um, then you get into problems with greedy and lazy, which is fine, maybe. So I've kind of gotten into the habit of just saying like, match everything that's not the next thing that I know is gonna be there. And then I'm replacing it with new slash a slash. So here I'm. The slash one is a back reference. These two backslashes, this is like a literal backslash. And we're gonna do that globally. I'm just doing it against all PHP files. And so, yeah, then it, it made my change. Like, again, would have been way easier to just type that. But when you have a quarter of a million lines of code and you're gonna introduce namespacing for the first time and you need to go through and anywhere that we throw an exception, or we instantiate a new object and we need to make sure they're all properly scoped, well, this one-liner would do it. Well, you need to do something to make it recursive. But that would work. 
Um, I don't have an example here. We can make one if we want to. Um, Non-capturing groups. So remember I had way back here. Wait for it. In this match for an IP address, within a I have an oh I have an anchor here, and there's the closing anchor. I have my open print here and a closing print here. So I'm saying find the numbers zero through nine, one to three of those, and then a dot. So one nine two dot, and then all that within parens, three of those. So one nine two dot, one six eight dot one dot, so that's three, and then I have, and then I have another one, zero through nine, one, one of three more numbers at the end. Um, let's say I wanted to use this regex within like a find and replace, and I was going to use back references. The, remember those back references are indexed, um, like one, slash one, slash two, slash three, slash four, slash nine. Um, if I put, if I made this a non-capturing group, then it would give me the the capability of a group, which means I can use like the bar to say or, or I can apply modifiers or quantifiers like the curly braces to say three of those, but it wouldn't actually be considered a back reference. So it wouldn't be captured and it wouldn't take up one of my numbers, one through nine. Um, so if I was going to have, so maybe I would have this entire thing within parentheses, and then I wanted to just use like slash one to, to pull in your entire IP address as a back reference. Obviously, it would be more of a complicated string because right, I wouldn't have it all anchored. But let's, let's go to the terminal. IP test. Your IP address is 1.64. That's my IP at work. So if I was going to say So if I had the smaller again, too small, anybody? Okay. So I'm looking for that, and I'm going to replace with that. Great. So that's our starting point. So if I do slash one. This, um, it only, it was just returned dot, one dot. It's because this first part, this first open parens uh, group was 192 dot, 168 dot, one dot. So it did that three times. So one dot is the last one that was there in that group. So when I do back reference one, that's what's returned. That's, that's not really what I meant. So doesn't need to be a group anyway. So I'm going to make this a non-capturing group. So now it's probably going to, it's going to, well, there's the back, there's nothing in back reference one right now. So let's say I wanted to match dot star and then all of this. Right. Greediness every time gets me. So, so here I'm just matching this dot star. This lazy dot lazy star is matching the text. Your IP address is space, and then within parens here I have your IP address. 
I made this group non-capturing so that it wouldn't interfere with my back references. And then the entire IP address is considered back reference one. So now I'm filtering it down to just that IP. One. What's oh, two? Yeah. So, so the inner one is two. So maybe in this example, you wouldn't need to do the non-capturing, but your engine is going to work harder to do that because it's going to have to keep those references. Oh, probably to tend to make it non-capturing, even if you don't care about back references. Probably, but um, it's probably not noticeable, and regex tend to be confusing enough that maybe just like, let's just make it as complicated as possible. Well, job security—that's what that's about, right there. <laughs> okay, we talked about this. Speaking about these being confusing. Um, one feature of regex that I don't see implemented in my work very often um, is comments. You can embed comments directly within your regex. Um, for some really complicated ones, like maybe, like at work, I'll see like a comment outside of the regex, which is fine too. And sometimes it's easier; it just kind of depends. Um, this is one of the. This is a feature of Regex that is not supported very widely. Like I'm pretty sure, like JavaScript doesn't. I could be wrong on that though. Um, so again, it's like a group here, and with a question mark, but then a hash. So everything within here, like that's a that's a comment. So like in my example, I'm looking for r dot star d. Just ignore this part because that's a comment. So we see red highlighted and gets matched again. Um, so all that, that text within parens we ignore. Um, another, so we talked about how there's different modes you can put it into, like Ben mentioned, multi-line mode. Different engines, um, PCRE and Perl support this, so like PHP has it, is uh, free spacing mode. The flag for that is X. Um, it puts you into this mode where white space is ignored unless you specifically request it with like slash s or like slash space, um, I think, right? Slash space. Um, so like here, this, I took a screenshot from that regex buddy website. Here he's got his regex in free spacing mode and he's just using comp, uh, he's using hashes to comp to add comments to his regex. So he's taken a semi-complicated regex, broken it out onto multiple lines because the white space doesn't matter anymore in this mode and that he's added comments on to say, well, first we're going to match, this is like, this is to match a date that's in year, month, day format. So we're going to match year, and there's a note that says this is group one for like my back references, and then a separator, and then month, and then a separator and day. So this is, um, if you have the luxury of using them, it, and you have a complicated enough regex, they can be pretty handy. Uh, any questions on comments? All right, so we talked about flags a little bit. Um, in your regex, you can, usually you can add, there's different ways you can add these flags on, and it depends on the language and how you're implementing it. Um, we talked about G is the global match, so you can say that you're, I want this to match across the entire string as much as possible. Um, I means case insensitive. Regex are, they're case sensitive by default. The uh, capital A will not match a lowercase a, but sometimes you'll turn on the case insensitivity, insensitivity flag. That's a hard word to say. And then it's like big A, little a, whatever. Um, depending on what you're working on, you might need to do this, and it, it'll slow things down quite a bit, but like if you were looking for, if the thing that you're looking for could be in either, in upper or lower case, you kind of have to. Like in PH, PHP is very forgiving, and one of the things about it is that it allows you to have 
uh, mixed case in your function names. So I can have a function named foobar, all lowercase, but if I call it with all uppercase foobar, PHP knows what I'm talking about, and it'll call the same function, which I think is horrible, because it, it means it's very hard for me to find, like, if you're not thinking about it, then it's, I want to say, like, oh, I'm going to change this function. I want to go look everywhere that this function is called to make sure that it's not going to mess anything up. Well, you got to remember that it's case insensitive. Um, talking about X is the free spacing mode, so you can have... Um, you can you can add in those comments and you can break your records out on multiple lines without affecting its, what it actually matches. And then M is multi-line mode. Um, we talked about how up caret and dollar sign match like the beginning and the end of the line. If you go into multi-line mode, it's not like they match the beginning and the end of the file. Like so, you can and like and then now in the in multi-line mode, also like your dot will match new line characters. So you can, if I wanted to find a specific, like, I'm looking for a specific regex that is going to be a pattern that is broken across multiple lines. So, like, for example, in that uh, XKCD comic, he's looking for something that's formatted like an address. My addresses are usually on, like, three lines. You know, you have your, like, the name and then the address and the city and state and zip. So, like, you might use multi-line to say, I'm looking for three lines that look like this in a row. Um, and again, like I say here, these are language dependent on which languages do and don't. Um, all these are specified, all these are included in Perl and PCRE, which means like PHP has them all. Um, and there's other flags, and there's other things on that regular expressions info, it's pretty neat, that you can turn these flags on like mid-regex, like if you wanted to say, like, I am just have a normal regex that's case sensitive up until this point, but then from here on it's case insensitive until a certain point, and then now it's case sensitive again. Um, like there's a syntax where you could like turn the flags on and on just within subsets of your pattern. Uh, some resources. This means we're getting to the end. Um, the my favorite website, my favorite re reference website for regular expressions is regularexpressions.info. Um, it has a lot of really good information. It's a little hard to navigate. You have to spend some time really poking around at it. It has a lot of good information about all the different things that regex can do. It has um, it has information about uh, like what different languages support different features, and it has like really nice, um, concise summaries or like very detailed walkthroughs and tutorials. Um, another thing that's really nice is if you want to understand the inner workings. Whenever they give you an example of a regex, they also give you um, like how the engine processes it. Like it might only be like a four-character regex, but it, they'll give you like a paragraph of well, first the engine looks for this, and then it does this, and then it'll go do this as much as it can. Um, there's way more advanced features of regex that we didn't cover today that you don't use very often, but they're neat if you have the interest. Um, and that website has a lot of that stuff on there. Uh, this next one, who, anybody ever use JS Fiddle for JavaScript? Um, if you haven't, it's a tool where you can you can go in. And there's like four panels. There's like there's your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript, and then like four of them. That's like the output, like what it's going to look like. So you put in all those pieces, and then it's like, oh, this is what it would look like. And then you could save it as a fiddle, they call it. And then you send it to someone else, and they can play the fiddle, and then they can see the output. So this is like if you're working with someone and they say, well, how do I do this in JavaScript? Or how do I do this in CSS? You can make up an example, save it, and then like send them a link and they can go look at it. Uh, RE fiddle or regex fiddle is the same thing, but it's just for regex, both for searching or searching and replacing. So you can say, given this text and this pattern, how's it going to work? It has options that you can turn on different flags. You can specify which language, which subset you're looking in. So like, I think they have like Perl, Ruby, and .NET, um, so like they could use more, but those are pretty common. And this other one, I like it because um, it's pretty detailed. It doesn't work very well in my browser. Like I can't, like it's, it's the text is small. I can't like zoom in for some reason it's the way it's built, and you can't like copy and paste stuff out of it. But given this stunning recommendation I'm giving it, it is a really nice website. It's called Regexer. Um, it, 
it's a similar kind of deal where there's a, an area where you can paste a bunch of text, and then there's a spot where you can put in your regular expression, and then it'll show you what matches, and you can try on different flags. But what's really nice about it is you can hover over the, the different pieces of your regex, and it'll give you a pop-up that says what this is. So like you might hover over a certain part, and it says non-capturing group, or lazy star, or um, just like any of the different things we talked about. And it has a really nice reference down like the right-hand side for all the different pieces. So to conclude, now that you've gone through this talk, when you're talking to somebody and they refer to like star Nix systems, being like Linux or Unix, you can be a smart aleck and be like, no, you mean open paren LINU bar UNI close paren X. Because really that's, in my opinion, more accurate. And then I just had to share this. I found this GIF that was titled, How I Feel When My Regex Works. And I think it's pretty accurate. You seen this guy? One shot, midair, grabs the guy, <laughs> down. And I'm telling you, when you write this complicated regex, and it does exactly what you want, like, the, especially the first time, you're just like, all right. I'm feeling pretty cool right now. I, I saw that too. That one was pretty funny. I like the part where it's like when my boss, when I, when I'm ready to show my boss that the thing works, and he's like, "Hey, look at this!" It just falls apart. <laughs> but uh, that's all I have. So, does anybody have any questions or comments, snide remarks? Hmm? I'm gonna go ahead. And...